Hello there. I am Pat Willie, the founder and CEO of the ministry, The Gathering, when women gather, when women worship. Thanks for listening in tonight. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. I pray that the word of God will bless you. It will be straight for you and that it will transform your life. All right, let's get started in the word of God. Again, thanks for joining me. Okay, guys, it's 7.03. Uh, this is Pat Willie. I'm here in Dallas, Texas. This is The Gathering, When Women Gather, When Women Worship. Thank you guys for being on tonight. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules and um, your, your evening and night to be a part of this Baba class and prayer. I thank you guys for your continual support, and I really appreciate you. And I just believe that God has something very special for us tonight. And then as we look into 2024, I just believe God has great plans for all of us. I feel with expectation, excited about what God will do in 2024. Well, again, thank you guys for being on. Uh, this is a gathering. We are a group of women from across the United States who are called to form authentic relationships with God and others, to experience freedom, to find our gifts and our callings, and to use those gifts and callings to impact the world. We're committed to live our very best life, not just surviving, but thriving in the things of God. We will live fully committed lives unto God. So again, thank you guys for being on. I really appreciate you. I appreciate your support and all the things that we are able to do through this ministry to 2023, and we're looking for even greater, even greater. We're putting the, the man on the spirit for even greater things in 2024. We're availing ourselves. We're submitting ourselves to the will and the purpose of God in 2024. And I know that when we set our hearts to seek him and we set our determination to obey him, and to follow his command, he will never, ever disappoint us. And so with that, again, thank all of you for being on. We're excited about the new year. I'm going to uh, just give you a couple of updates, and we'll get started. So the Gathering Host Summit for 2024 is going to be October, the, I think it's the second through the, through the 5th. Uh, it's the first weekend in October. It's already shaping up. Uh, we're working on our host city. Our host city is going to be Austin, Texas. Again, our host city is going to be Austin, Texas. We're working on the speakers. We're getting an early, early start this year, and we know God is going to meet us there, and and we're having it in Austin. A lot of people will be able to, to drive there, so I'm excited about what God will do in the 2024 The Gathering Host Summit. Uh, this is our fourth year. Our first year, we were out in Terrell, Texas. Then we went to um, Chicago. Last year, we were in Tampa, Florida. And this year, Austin, Texas. So mark your calendars for that first weekend in October and plan to meet us in Austin, Texas, where, again, our guest speakers are lining up, and I'm excited about that. I'll share more about that as we finalize so with those guest speakers. And the next thing I want to make you aware of is that I am um, relaunching the gathering small group that we started this ministry off with meeting in cities and in areas. So if you would like for me to come to your city, to present the gathering to a small group of your friends or people from your community, please contact me and let me know. Uh, that, that's what we did. The gathering is now six years old. It'll be six years old in February. So the very first two years, we did that. And God blessed us to go to 12 cities the first year, 15 cities the second year. And, and it was a model of Jesus. Jesus went to where the people were. 
And so if you desire to do something like that, you want more information about it, get in contact with me, and I can let you know what that consists of. Lastly, we're planning our international trip to Bali, Indonesia. Again, Bali, Indonesia. And uh, that trip was planned for mid-February, and it has been postponed. Our mission sponsor became ill. Christian is her name uh, in their Indonesia. She lives in Bali, Indonesia, and her illness required surgery. So she had her surgery, I think, one week ago. So she's recuperating and at home. And so we will put that back on the calendar, uh, and we will let you know any updates for those of you who are interested in international ministry. Again, our uh, plans are to go to Bali, Indonesia, to do some work with Youth with a Mission there and serve the people uh, and do some teaching, some training there, as we did in uh, Japan, oh, I think it was three years ago. So anyway, we are really excited about that opportunity. And I know when the time is right, when the season is right, God will make it happen. So with that, we're going to get started with tonight's lesson. We're going to be praying for our prayer list. We have quite a few on our prayer list tonight, and that's fine. We're going to be praying for them. We're going to be interceding for them. That's what God has called us to do, is to serve others and to pray for others and to encourage others. So that being said, let me just pray tonight, and we'll get started with our lesson. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor and praise, and we worship your name. Thank you for your name. Your name is holy. You are our God, our Lord, and our Savior. We thank you, God, for the gathering of women tonight, for all of those that are on the call, for all of those that will listen later. We pray that you speak to their hearts and their minds and their souls. Holy Ghost. I pray for real-time revelation, knowledge, insight, wisdom, and prophetic anointing that you would speak to us in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Pray that you would strengthen my body in the name of Jesus. And we give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. <clears throat> Well, good evening to all of you again. For those of you just joining us, this is Pat Willey. This is The Gathering, When Women Gather, When Women Worship. We're going to get started with our lesson tonight. And actually, we're going to pick up from where we left off about two weeks ago. And I told you that uh, uh, at the end of November and early December, I was led by the Lord to go on a 14-day fast. And during those 14 days, God spoke to my heart each day. I have written down all the things that the Lord said, all the visions that I saw, and every, all the dreams, and I kept up, it, kept up with it each day. But on day 10, the Lord spoke some specifically to my heart, and he said that the year 2024 is going to be the year of healing for leaders. The year 2024 is going to be the year of healing for leaders. And, and I don't know if you're aware, but I'm sure some of you are, of all the things that we've been hearing, you know what I'm saying, in the news, uh, yeah, in social media, all the things that are going on with leaders, and, and not just uh, political leaders, but in church leaders. Uh, and so I believe that God, and there is a clarion call for uh, uh, by the spirit for the next group of leaders. And in order that we lead well, then God has to heal us in order that we lead and that our leadership is effective. So God is calling the next group of leaders, 2024, the year of healing for leaders. And there are so many other things that God shared with me during those 14 days. I'm going to be sharing those things with you. There are some prophetic um, words that the Lord gave me, and I'm going to be sharing those things 
uh, over the next couple of weeks with you, God. I want to take a different approach to our lessons. Uh, at the end of each lesson going forward, I want to save some time for questions and comments. And I want to give you uh -huh, the scriptures uh, and the reading assignment for the next week. So I want to save some time for comments, questions that you may have at the end of each uh, lesson, then I want to, again, give you the scriptures for the next week so that you'll be prepared for the lesson uh, and you'll know the scriptures that we're going to be speaking from. So two weeks ago, we started to talk about leadership and we said that each of us are called to be leaders. And we looked at the scripture and we were able to extrapolate some truth from the scriptures that we are all leaders. And so we discovered, first of all, as a leader, we have to believe that we are chosen by God. And we established the truth that I am God's choice, that God has called each and every one of us. He has chosen us. And so we looked at John 15 and 16, and this is Jesus teaching his disciples. And he says to them, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. Leaders, and I'm just inserting that, multiply and they're productive. Leadership is productive. And his scripture goes on to say, and that your fruit should remain. The fruit of the Spirit, yes, that's in you should remain. And then he says, and whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So God chose us. It is a chosen or it is a choice for service. When God chooses us, he chooses us for service. He appoints us for a mission on earth. And that mission on earth is involves winning souls for Christ. Let me say that. When God chooses us, it is a choice for service. For the Son of Man came to serve. Jesus came to serve and not to be served. And so we are called with that same calling, and that is to serve others. Here's what we learn from that scripture. God chooses leaders. We are all leaders in some role or capacity. God ordains and appoints leaders for specific assignments and time. God plants leaders. When God chooses us, it is his choice for a particular service. God gives leaders the ability to be productive. The Spirit of the Lord enables leaders to produce and remain in communion and covenant with God. Now, that, that's, that's powerful. Let me say that again. The Spirit of God enables us as leaders to produce and remain in communion and covenant, covenant agreement with God meaning that we agree with God's plan and purpose for our lives. Uh -huh. Communion involves us loving God, uh -huh, loving others, and when we're in communion with God, loving God, loving others, then our prayers are answered. Glory be to God. There is a promise of God for leaders. There is a promise specifically from God for all leaders. When we are in communion with his plan and purpose, we know God will and will answer our prayers. We know God's will and our prayers and knowledge of the scripture will birth a faith that aligns with God's will and our prayers will be answered. Let me say that, read that again. When we're in communion, and with God's plan and purpose, we will know God's will 
and our prayers and knowledge of the scriptures will birth a faith that aligns with the will of God, and then our prayers are answered. Yes. And so many times as leaders, our fruit get contaminated while leading. Remember he said, you should go forth and bear fruit and your fruit shall remain. Our fruit gets contaminated while leading. Because leading and leadership is not an easy job. Because why? In the kingdom, we're leading sheep. And sometimes sheep act like sheep. And they have sheep mentality. Yeah. And so what do I mean when I say sheep mentality? They run off. They get stuck. They get away from the herd. They go and try and attach themselves to other flocks, meaning that they are doing what they know to do by nature. But uh, God is calling us, glory be to God, to be leaders doing this hour. There's so many people that need to be saved, so many people that need to be healed, so many people that need to be delivered. And there's a cry in the spirit for the next group of leaders. It is a cry that Isaiah heard when he heard the voice of God say, and whom shall we send and who shall go for us? And the scripture says, and Isaiah said, chapter 6 of Isaiah, here am I, Lord, send me. It's that willingness to obey God. It's the willingness to obey God. And again, I say, we have all been called to lead in some role and some capacity. We can all take a leadership role in some things. And so many times when we're leading, we're leading at the same time, or we're leading and we are keep ourselves. So the People that we're leading, uh-huh. we're just like them. Uh-huh. We have characteristics just like them. God is not looking for a perfect leader. What he's looking for is a willing leader. He's looking to see, uh, he's looking to find those who will, uh, yeah, be the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ. Yes. Sometimes, even as leaders, we have the tendency to act just like the sheep in which you are leading. Glory be to God. But God is able to help us all, and he's able to help us in all situations. Now, that's power. God is able to help us all, and he's able to help us in all situations. So whatever capacity that you're leading in, where it is on your job, what is in your family, yes, where it's among your coworkers, what is in your church, where it's in your small group, whatever capacity you're leading, glory be to God. Your role as a mother, your role as a wife. God is able to help us, and he's able to help in every situation. Glory be to God. He wants to be involved in every situation. He wants us to involve him in our situation. So the first point is, in being a leader, is you must know that God chose you. I am God's choice. Glory be to God. We have to get that settled in our minds so that the enemy won't come and rob us of the plan and the purpose of God. And if God chose us, he's able to equip us. He never chooses any. He never makes an assignment that he's not able to support and to equip and give us the things that we need to do the job. The next thing is, God chose me from the foundation of the world. God chose me before the foundation of the world. The plan that God has for each and every one of us was made, determined, 
before there ever was a heaven and an earth, before the foundation of the world. How do we know that? We know that from the scripture in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. And this is what it says. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. God revealed himself and that to Jeremiah that Jeremiah was one chosen. So we be to God. And that Jeremiah, too, was given a purpose. And God is saying the same thing for us. Tonight, you are chosen and you have a purpose in life. This is what he says to Jeremiah. Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you were born, I sanctified you and I ordained you as a prophet unto the nation. Jeremiah was God's choice. God called him. God had a plan for his life, glory be to God, that he would be able to stand in a role of a prophet and speak and become the mouthpiece of God. And may I say to each of you tonight, glory be to God, you are God's choice. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Yes, and it was before the foundation of the world. And just that, God said to Jeremiah, Lord. He's saying to us, yeah, I want to use you. I'm calling you. Yeah. And so I answer in the spirit to be yes, Lord. No more excuses. No more making it. I'm putting it off to tomorrow. No more procrastination. This is the year of the healing of the leaders. There, again, I say, there is a clarion call in the spirit. Glory be to God. For the next group of leaders that God is going to use. Uh, God, uh, here's number three. So number one is, let me go back here. I am God's choice. That's point number one. And I gave you a scripture for that. Point number two is, God chose me before the foundation of the world. And I gave you that scripture. Here's number three. God knows what he put in me. God knows what he put in me. Sometimes we sense that God has placed what God has placed in us. And sometimes we may not be sure of that. We have a, 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 a prompt or inkling that we're being called for some purpose but we may not be sure of that purpose. But as God did for Jeremiah, he will do the same to us. If we would seek the face of God, God will reveal his plan and his purpose for us. He loves us. He's full of compassion for us. And God will open up our understanding God will glory, reveal his plan for us. So in the story of Jeremiah, we're going back there. It gives some clarity in the understanding this truth, that God knows what he put in us. God, uh, Jeremiah said to God, Lord, I can't speak. I am just a child. And in the essence, God says to Jeremiah, I know what I have put in you. And so I'm saying to each and every one of us, glory be, what we think our limitations may be, glory be to God knows what he's put down on the inside of each and every one of us. And God says to Jeremiah, stop saying you're a child. In other words, he's saying, no more excuses. God says, I will send you. Oh, glory, that's powerful. God says, I will send you. And when we go, we represent God. We're not representing ourselves. We're representing God. We go for the cause of the kingdom, not for our own name or not for popularity, not for a big name, not for a show. God says, I will 
in you. Glory. And he's saying the same thing. As leaders tonight, God says, I will send you. And when you go, you represent me. So God anoints and equips those he sends. God says to Jeremiah, do not be afraid of the faces of the people. The Lord is with you to deliver you. And I'm saying tonight that whatever obstacle you're facing, the Lord is here. Uh huh. He's with us to intervene and take care of it. God said to Jeremiah, if it's fear, God is able to help us. Whatever you're going through, whatever you think about, God is able to build capacity. He already knows what he's placed down on the inside of each of us. And I'm unwilling to say that we have not scratched the surface of all the things that God has placed uh, in us. Glory be to God. Thank you. That's why the scripture says, and we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. So God is able to help us. And one of the things I wanted to share with you was uh, when we went to Japan back in 2020, right before the pandemic hit, I had never led an international mission team before. I had no experience. I went to my friend, and we spent a day at their camp learning how to do international ministry, learning, you know, what should we be mindful of or what of are the precautions that we should take? What should we be doing? I called also one a missionary that I, I've known that had traveled extensively and said, hey, um, and that's when I went to Africa. I called her and said, what should I be aware of? What should I do? Yes. And, and I had apparently worked myself up into just a frenzy. And I remember being up in my living space while I, where I pray most of the time, where I go up to my living space to pray, that's where. And I was on my knees, and I heard God say, don't fear, daughter. And when he said that, don't fear, daughter, it struck something powerful in my spirit. Glory be to God. It let me know, glory, first of all, that I'm in relationship with him. Remember I told you he's, he, he's with you. God is with you. He called me daughter. That means that I had a relationship with him. Glory. I never heard him say that to me before. And then he said, don't fear. Glory be to God. That let me know that whatever I was about to take on, yes, he was going to be there. He was going to see me through it. And when we went to Japan, glory to me, God moved miraculously in Japan. And, oh, my God, I can't even tell you. I don't have time to testify of all the things that God uh, did in Japan. And when I prayed and asked God, yes, to forgive me of the fear, God just opened up miraculously in Japan and all the things that he did and all the connections that he made, yes, uh, were just miraculous. And that, and I don't have any other words to describe it except for that, that he moved in a very powerful way. But what am I saying to you? God knows what he's put on the inside of you. Don't fear. God is with you. You have a relationship with him. You're in covenant with God. You have an agreement with God, and God's going to take good care of you. All he wants is a willing heart. So reveal God. He's calling for the next group of leaders. So God says to Jeremiah in verse 9, chapter 1, verse 9, then the Lord said, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, I have put my word in your mouth. Glory be to God. And so that's what I was talking about. 
God has put something very special in each and every one of us, in all of us, that we are equipped, we are enabled, we are embodied to carry out the plan of God. With Jeremiah, it was a touching of the lips, glory, that signified that God's word was on the inside of us. And for you, it may be something different, but you must know that God is with you. Glory be to God. And when God is with us, he's more than the whole world against us. So fear and the excuses must be healed. Today we ask God to lay his hand on us. Glory be to God. Give us the grace and the blessed assurance that he's on our side. Yes, he's with us. As leaders, we must be bold and courageous to do the things that God has placed on the inside of us. God revealed his plan for Jeremiah's life. God gave Jeremiah specific instructions and it, that included a location and a mission. And I'm saying to you, glory be to God, begin to speak God's faith. Begin to, yes, ask God, what is it? Yes, that you would have for me to do in 2024. What is it? Glory be to God. How do I serve as a leader in 2024? And just as specific as God was with Isaiah, with Jeremiah, sorry, Jeremiah, he will be that specific and detailed with you. Glory. So he says in verse 10, and I'm almost finished. I have. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over kingdoms. And this is what I call you to do, to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant, which was God's specific, yes, plan for Jeremiah. And again, he has a specific, detailed, outlined plan for each of us. While we have to spend time in his presence, seeking it out, we have to spend time. Yes, no more excuses, no more fear. We have to get in the presence of God and seeking God. Yes, because he says in his word, if we ask, we shall receive. If we seek, we shall find. If we knock, the door will be open unto us. Yes, he wants to use us all. And then the last one is, let me go back. First one is, I am God, God's source. Second one, God chose me before the foundation of the world. Third one is, God knows what he put in me as a leader. And the fourth one and the last one is, I have the grace and favor of God on my life that that enables me to carry out the plan of God. Let me say that again. I have the grace, thank you, Lord Jesus, and the favor of God on my life that enables me, equips me to carry out the plan of God on my life. Listen what the word reads about, about Jesus and favor from Luke 2 and 40. This is Jesus. And the child, Jesus, grew and become, became strong, filled with wisdom. And the favor of God was on him. God will give us favor to carry out our assignments and the assignments that seem humanly impossible. God will give us favor with men. God will give us favor with others. God will give us favor with people that will come alongside of us. Yes, that will partner with us in order, yes, that his kingdom is advanced. The favor of God, 
Yes. Favor is acceptable, the goodwill, and the peripheral per, 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 treatment of God. Sorry there. God has no favor. He calls and equips those as he leads. That is, he calls and equips those that are needed at the time. And he, because he knows what he's put in each of us. As Jesus enjoyed the grace and the favor of God in his life, as a leader, he was able to teach, heal, and meet the needs of people. We have that same grace and favor on our lives today. Uh huh. That same grace and favor, and many times grace and favor are used interchangeably in the Bible. Mm-hmm. And not only do we have it, but the scripture says, the more we know about Jesus, the more grace and peace is multiplied in our lives. The more that we know about Jesus, the more that we know about his word, yes, the more that we submit to his word, grace and peace is multiplied in our lives. And that's found in Second Peter verse 1 and 2. As our knowledge of God increases, glory be to God, we gain a better understanding of grace and favor and what he has called us to do and how he has equipped us to do it. But we realize how much or how important it is to be effective leaders. Here's my last scripture. And I'm done. James 4 and 6. He gives more grace. I want you to know what you're called tonight and all of us are. Grace is available to help you. He gives more grace. God resists the pride, but gives grace to the humble. And the scripture says he is able to make grace abound towards us mm. so that we have sufficiency in all things and in every good work leadership for well, god is a good work god don't send us out and not provide the help and the resources that's needed what he's waiting for us to do is, is step out on faith glory be to god in every area that we're serving us and serving and serving others, God is there to help us. So in being called as a leader, I have to know that I'm God's source. I must believe that God chose me before the foundation of the world. I have to trust that God knows what he put in me. And I have the favor and grace of God on my life that's equipping me, enabling me to carry out the plan of God for my life. Okay, I want to stop right there. That's my lesson. I want to give you the scriptures for next week's lesson. Here they are. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. Genesis. Chapter 2, verse 7 through 15. Genesis, chapter 3, verse 1 through 11. Let me say those again, and I'll put them on the group me site. Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. Genesis 2, 7 through 15. Genesis 3, 1 through 11. What we're going to take a look at in these scriptures, we're going to get to meet the first group of human leaders, Adam and Eve. We're going to look at their assignment. We're going to look at their failures as leaders. We're going to look at them being God's choice. So that's for next week. Quickly, if there are any questions or comments, I would like to hear from you at this time. 
take yourself off of mute. If you have a question or comment about leader and being God, leader and being called by God, any questions, any comments? Okay, here none. I pray that you were blessed by this lesson. I pray and I know that the Holy Spirit stirred something in your hearts and your minds tonight and that we were all challenged by the scripture. Yes, we're all challenged by the word of God to become everything that God has called us to be. It's never too late. We're never too, you know what I'm saying? We're not too old. There are things that we can do to help advance the kingdom of God as leaders. And again, I say to you, there is a clarion call in the spirit for the next group of leaders. It's time for us to step up. Yeah. It's time for all of us to step up by faith to carry out the plan and the purpose of God for our lives. I want to quickly go to our prayer request night and uh, if you have a prayer request oh glory i want you to um let me know your prayer request i'm going to read the list of prayer requests that we have we're praying for robert lewis we're praying for erica aj leticia felicia dorothea omega kristen marlon hill calandra Joanna, the Moody Jackson Bedford family. We're praying for Deborah Hill. We're praying for the Hattie Taylor and family. We're praying for the Willie family, for the Minor family. We're praying for Andre and James Garner. We're praying for Tiffany and her family. We're praying for the Ludy and Garcia family, the Bradford family. And last on our list is the Allison family. So we're praying and we're interceding that God would move in a very powerful way and that he would hear every request. God hears the cries of the righteous. And he restores. And he helps us. So any other prayer requests tonight? Hey, Sister Willie, it's Tiffany. <laughs> um, so, hi. Um, so, hi. I'm into. I'm back into England, um, oh. and <laughs> and I am back at my church home here, um, okay, and we are great. working on expanding our capacity. And so, you are definitely in the vein of what the direction that I'm even going here, um, and so. I've been called to different different roles in hospitality, different roles and things that I didn't even know that God had graced me with and that's in mm-hmm. me. So I just ask as a leader um, that he continues to undergird me, but give me, like you said, if he called me to it, he's equipped me. Um, mm-hmm. He's given me the skills. He's given me um, everything I need to go forth. And just being yeah. confident in that because they see things in me that I hadn't even seen yet in myself. And he speaks mm-hmm. those things and he's taking me into a new season. And so I just pray that he expands my capacity, but he expands my confidence in that capacity as well. Amen. We will be praying for you that as you submit to God, to the will of God, that God will give you, and we know he will everything that's needed to carry out his plan there in, in England. What time is it in England? Uh, one forty-seven. <laughs> wow, bless your heart. And that's a.m., right? A.m., yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to pray for you that God give you strength <laughs> for being on the call at 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, thank you for being on. It's good to hear from you, Tiffany. Thank so you for uh, let's just pray. Uh, any other prayer requests? Good evening. This is Elaine, and I'm asking prayer for Bob and Sylvia. 
And then also prayer for Allison as she moves forward in the next phase of her life. Okay. We will pray and add those to our prayer list. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other prayer requests? If not, let's just quickly pray together for the prayer requests and asking God for his divine intervention. We know that God is able to do, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. There is no distance in the spirit. So I can touch my sister in England who can touch everyone that have asked for prayer, even in their different settings. And no matter where they are, God is able to do it. So that's where we pray from today. The faith that God has the ability to do it. And he will do it for us. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We magnify your name for your name is holy. You are our God. Oh, we feel your presence now. Mm. Glory. Thank you for whole glory. Thank you for being such a great God and always there, always on time, always comforting us when we need it. You always take care of us. Mm-hmm. We give you glory. We give you praise mm-hmm. for your provision, my God, your humble. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, for your comfort, for your protection. Mm-hmm. We thank you, God. I don't know mm-hmm. Glory. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the compassion that you have for us. We pray in the name of Jesus, glory be to God, for all of those that have called in and asked for prayer. God, we pray for those that are going through anguish and extreme distress in their bodies. Yes, Lord. Their face wet. Life threatening diseases. Oh, but got you the answer, Mama Mokoshi. Mm-hmm. Even when the doctor says there's no cure, mm-hmm. there's always healing, glory. Mm-hmm. And we ask that you would touch and heal tonight in the yeah. name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All yes, those that are yes, suffering from cancer. And going through treatment. Mm -hmm. Yes, God, we pray for their bodies. We pray, yes, God, in the name of Jesus, Mm -hmm. that their bodies would respond to the treatment, that the treatment would be effective, God, and they will not succumb to, yeah, to the, yeah, side effects of Mm -hmm. any of the treatment, God, but you would make them strong in their bodies. God, and that you would heal them, that you would bring them on the other side of it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we give you glory. We give you praise in Jesus. Oh, glory. Mm. Glory be to God. Glory, 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 mm. glory, glory.
that they will show love in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and that we will love others as you have loved us, that we will forgive one another. Yes, yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And we give you glory for it. We give you praise. We pray for the yes, God. Our sister Tiffany there in England, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would please speak to our hearts and her mind and her soul and that you would equip her for everything that, yes, you have called her to do, God. I pray for a keen sense of discernment for her that she will know beyond of a shadow of a doubt, yeah, who she should partner with and what things she should take on in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And I give you glory, God, that you're watching over mm-hmm. her and you're protecting her. Yes, God, in the name of Jesus. And as she said, you are equipping her for the work and the call of God on her life, even in England. God, that you can do it. Mm-hmm. We pray for Allison. We pray for direction. We pray for Bob and Sylvia, whatever's needed, God. You're able to supply it. We pray for all of those that continually call in week after week, God, that's committed to the teaching and to the ministry of the gathering. I pray your blessings upon their homes. I pray your blessings upon their lives. I pray, God, that every need is met in the name of our Lord and Savior. I pray that their homes are filled with your presence. The anointing of God, the Spirit of God, Feel their home of our shoulder. He no no manana shoto. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I pray for a blood covering over their homes, God. In Jesus' name, that you would cover them with your blood, that their homes would be covered, their children would be covered, their grandchildren would be covered. In the name of our Lord, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you that all of our needs are met. Yes, Lord. Whatever need, you're meeting it now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, we Jesus. Trust you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We trust you. Thank you, Jesus. And yes, we give Lord. you glory and we give you praise. Yes, and we thank you, God, for the great things that you will thank do you, for us and through thank us you, in 2024. We are yes, filled Lord. with expectation. We are filled with excitement. Yes, thank God, you, of the plans and the purpose that you have for us. And we recommit our life mm-hmm. to the plan and the purpose of God in Jesus' yeah. name. We sure up upon your sake. You know, no, 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 Thank you, Jesus. Before the foundation of the world. Oh, yes, Lord. You know what you put in us. Thank you for the grace and favor that's on our lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. We give you glory and praise. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. All right, guys. You guys be blessed. Mm. Holy Ghost is moving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah Ministering to. Yeah. Thank you, Ministering to you guys. Mm. Thank you, Mom. Letting you know that he's, yeah, he's on your side. Yeah. That he loves you. Oh, He's going to yes, take good care of you. Glory to be with you. Thank Every you. stage of your life, he's with you. He's with us. Yes, Glory to God. Yes, thank you. Yes. Thank you and we trust God. Well, yes. We trust thank God. God. Thank you, Jesus. God, we trust you. Yeah, we oh, do, for Lord. grace thank to trust you. him more. Oh, for grace mm-hmm. yes, to God. trust him more. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Jesus Thank you, Lord. Name. Jesus. Yes. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. The peace of God rests on each of you. Thank you. Have a great night, sleep, and great night, Buddha. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, guys, have a great weekend. Yeah. Stay warm. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, sis. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for being on tonight. We love you. We'll see you back on next Thursday for another love time. You. Yeah. Bye now. Hello there. This is Pat Willie again. Thanks for listening in to this week's Bible's lesson. I know you were blessed by the word as I was. Join us again next week as we gather to learn more about the word of God. Blessings now. Have a blessed week. In Jesus' name, amen.